question, why African Medicine Agency? Let us start by asking ourselves, what is the state of play? The level of dependence of Africa on externally manufactured goods is problematic, as inequities in access to COVID vaccines has reminded us. Africa has a limited pharmaceutical industry. Although the continent accounts for approximately 17% of the world's population, it bears 25% of the world's burden of disease. But only 3% of the medicines and only 1% of the vaccines consumed by its people or produced locally. In addition, Africa has the highest prevalence of substandard and falsified medicines. Limited size of pharmaceutical industry is uh, partly driven by regulatory system weaknesses, including unclear regulatory policies, I can say it, inefficient regulatory procedures and processes, and limited capabilities on general regulatory topics. In this regard, the entry into force of the African Medicine Agency, AMA, is a major step forward, and indeed a key milestone to celebrate. The AMA Treaty, we have to remember, was adopted by uh, the African Union in 2019 as a continent-wide regulator to address the fragmentation in regulatory decisions making to accelerate clinical research and the introduction of new health products, including vaccines. AMA will build on the excellent work done under the African Medicine Regulatory Harmonization Initiative. The, to harmonize, in fact, uh, technical standards and optimize regulatory processes on the continent. There is uh, a continued need for AMA to advance the health security of the continent, as well as to earn and return the trust of our people in our health products now more than ever. This will increase the ability of our continent and that of each nation to deal with the disease outbreaks and address ongoing and evolving epidemiological concern, ensuring rapid uptake of essential medical products. More specifically, let me say that AMA, African Medicine Agency, will help build Africa's research and development capacity, harmonize regulations in drug registration, help countries comply with the best practices and international standards, strengthen the fight against substandard and counterfeit medicines and medical products. Finally, having with AMA a robust continental regulatory and oversight mechanism will increase global confidence in African products, which will enhance the reputation and growth of African pharmaceutical manufacturers, enabling them to become net exporters. The eyes of continent are on us now. And it is time to leverage this momentum to make a true change 
and progress. For too long, Africa has relied on global regulatory systems. We have an opportunity now to design and implement a continental regulatory system for African people, by African people, and leveraging African capabilities and talent. If I understood very well your question, you're saying that uh, after the COVID crisis, why not to develop a pan-African autonomous research agendas on vaccine, medicine, and health products in Africa? Many African priorities, in fact, in health, are not a priority in the global north. Therefore, Africa must systematically identify the priority disease and pathogen and develop a strong research agenda to address these priorities. A Pan-African research agenda using lessons drawn from the COVID-19 is an imperative. This agenda must be driven by African institutions. This will guarantee that the continent's priorities are secured by these institutions. Domestic financing, of course, will be key to keep the independence of our institutions in creating and implementing those agendas. It is critical to strengthen regional research and development collaboration platforms, which give African manufacturers equal access to technologies through technology transfer and ownership of intellectual property rights. By coordinating with the global and regional health bodies, we can develop an African research and development strategy focusing on key areas of research and specific labs. This kind of targeting could, of course, help identify priority areas for knowledge transfer, attract more regional financing, develop the local workforce, and fully embrace a sustainable African model to pursue basic science discovery. The foundation of any drug development in the future. Finally, by developing local research agendas, Africa will be providing the manufacturing sectors with a pipeline of health products for the African market and beyond. Our research will lead to products of which we own the intellectual property and we can therefore manufacture without any of the complications that we see currently. Acting in this direction will be key to building local capacity, which, will, which we will use in the medium and long term to secure even bigger manufacturing companies in Africa. Thanks for this excellent question. The question uh, is not just a technical issue. In 2021, it's truly political. The global pharmaceutical market was worth more than uh, 1,400 
billion US dollar. The African continent accounted for only 0.7% of this market. We have a huge opportunity here to boost our pharma industry with the creation of the African continental free trade area, which will integrate a market of 1.3 billion people and potentially 2.2 billion people by 2050. Limited size of pharmaceutical industry, I already said it, is partly driven by regulatory uh, system weaknesses and a limited capability on general regulatory topics. The economies of scale offered by the African continental free trade area will mean that the market size is no longer an obstacle to pharmaceutical manufacturers engaging in local production of health products, including medicines and vaccines. By increasing regional trade, lowering uh, trade costs, and uh, streamlining border procedures, full implementation of the African continental free trade area would offer an opportunity to boost intra-African trade and help to build more resilient African pharmaceutical industries. The continent, of course, are facing multiple challenges to boosting development and production of affordable and accessible vaccine and medicine on its own. A first challenge is technology absorption and the workforce. As we build manufacturing technology, we need to develop a local workforce that can access and use these new technologies. Our agenda, particularly African Union, key agenda prioritizes human capital for technical expertise and innovation, sustainable homegrown talent, incentivized to remain on the continent, expertise in research and development, regulatory issues, and modern manufacturing, discoveries in biotechnology, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and digital health tools. Consolidating Africa's productions depends on a robust market and production units that address market needs. This can be done by fostering sustainable production and manufacturing through market incentives and regulatory policy. It could include incentives for health funds such as Gavi and the Global Fund to design investment strategies for purchasing of locally produced goods. Along those same lines, production capacity needs to be made solidly sustainable. We must focus on developing local upstream supply chains, local and regional public procurement, regional storage sites for locally produced medical products. All this demands a review of existing policy and political commitment. Thank you very much.